Okay, you guys. So this, these are composite functions. So if we just read the sentence, a composite function is created when one function is substituted into another function. So really what they are, it's like when you get two functions stuck together. So you should be used to seeing things like f of x, and you should be used to seeing things uh, of g of x, where they're just functions, where they could be anything. So it could be 2x plus 1, and it could be x squared minus 3, or it could be anything. So those are just functions by themselves. A composite function is like when two functions basically get stuck together, or so one function is put into another function. So f of g of x, that's what um, they're called, or else g of f of x. And there could be other letters here, either instead of g or f, but generally uh, it's g, it's f of g of x and g of f of x are the ones that you usually see in questions. Um, Let's have a look at this anyway. So, if you're, uh, let's look. The first bullet point is to find f of g of x. Put x into the function g first, and then put the answer into the function f. So it's like we're putting something into a function and putting the answer to that into the other function. Uh, to find g of f of x, put the put into the function f first, and then put the answer into g. So. Uh, whichever one is closest to the x, basically, you put it into that first. So here, see the way f is closer to to the x there. So therefore, you put the x into f first, and then after that, you put the answer into g. And for the top one, because g is closer to x there, you put the x into the g function first, and then the answer into f. So hopefully it will become a bit clearer when we go through the examples on your end. The first one... Uh, they're giving us two functions, so f of x is x plus 3, g of x is x squared minus 1. And the first thing they're asking us for here is f of g of 2. So what I'm going to do, because 2, because the g there is beside the, the 2, or it's closest to the 2, I'm going to put 2 into g of x first. So I'm going to put 2 basically into g of x, and whatever answer we get to that then, we put that answer into f into the function f. So let's just look through the first one first anyway. So g of 2 would be, I just put in a 2 instead of the x, so it would be 2 squared minus 1. So 2 squared, or 2 squared is 4, minus 1 is 3. So final answer there is 3, but then I'm going to put that answer into the function f, and I know that f of x uh, So basically, I've worked out that g of 2 is 3. So therefore, f of g of 2 would be where I put the 3 into the function f. So uh, and f of x is x plus 3. So therefore, it would be 3 plus 3. So therefore, 3 plus 3 is 6. So f of g of 2 then is 6. So I've just worked out what g of 2 was. I worked out that that was 3, and then I put the 3 into the function f, and the final answer is 6. So, second one then is g of f of minus 1. So, see the way the f is closest to the minus 1 here? Therefore, I'm going to figure out what f of minus 1 is first. So, f of minus 1 then would be minus 1 plus 3, because I'm just putting a minus 1 in instead of the x. So, minus 1 plus 3 is 2, positive 2. Then I'm going to take that 2, that answer, because that's what f of minus 1 is. And in order to get g of f of minus 1 then, I'm going to put that 2 into the g function. And the g function is x squared minus 1. So therefore it's going to be 2 squared minus 1. Uh, so 2 squared is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So g of f of minus 1, uh, final answer to that is 3. Right, the next one then asks us for f of g of x. So in order to get f of g of x, we're going to pretty much do it the same way. It's just now we have x instead of a number. So I'm going to, because g is closest to the f there, I'm going to do g of x. So g of x is x squared minus 1. So that's what g of x is. And we don't need to do anything else there. But then we need to take that x squared minus 1 and I'm going to put that basically into the into the x in the f function. So instead of 
Uh, so f of g of x then would be, it's where I'm putting the x squared minus 1. I'm putting all of that in there instead of that x. So it's like I'm looking at, it's like it's this, but instead of the x, it's an x squared minus 1. So what it's going to look like is um, x squared minus 1 plus 3. And then I can tidy it up, so minus 1 plus 3 would be plus 2, so it's going to be x squared plus 2. So that's what f of g of x would be. Then they ask us, so this is the last one then, they ask us for uh, g of f of x. So again, because the f is closest this time, I'm going to figure out what f of x is first, and f of x is just x plus 3. So now, to get g of f of x, I'm going to put the f of x into the function. So I'm going to put the x plus 3 into uh, this x in here. So the, um, into the x squared minus 1. So the x plus 3 goes in instead of the x in the x squared. So then it's going to be x plus 3 to b squared minus 1. And then we can use skills of algebra then, um, expand in double brackets. So x plus 3 squared is the same thing as x plus 3, x plus 3, minus 1. And then if I multiply out these brackets, so you might have learned it in different ways, um, you're going to uh, split up the first bracket. Minus 1, so... This is just expanding out double brackets and it's just kind of simplifying your answer. So x multiplied by x is x squared. x multiplied by 3 is 3x. Three, uh, 3 multiplied by x is 3x. And 3 multiplied by 3 is 9 minus 1. So we get x squared plus 6x plus 8. So that would be the that would be g of f of x. And so that one there I had to expand out these brackets. So um Here's another question then, so it's similar enough to that one, so uh, if you want to just pause the video, have a go at them, and then play it on, and I'll go through the answers. Right, so the first one here, f of g of 1. So I'm going to figure out what g of 1 is first. So g of 1 would be where I put a 1 in instead of the x in here. So that would be 3 multiplied by 1 plus 2, so 3 multiplied by 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So g of 1 there is 2, so then I'm going to, in order to get what f of g of 1 is, which they ask us for, I have to put this 5 into the equation f. And if so I'm putting it in instead of the x in there, so it would be 2 multiplied by 5 minus 1. So 2 multiplied by 5 is 10, take away 1 is, is 9. So that's what f of g of 1 is. Second one here, they ask us for g of f of minus 3. So because the f is beside the minus 3 here, I'm going to find f of minus 3 first. So f of minus 3 would be 2 multiplied by minus 3 minus 1. So that's minus 6 minus 1, which is minus 7. And then I'm asked for g of f of minus 3. So g of f of minus 3 then is where I take the minus 7 and I'm putting it into the x in the g function. So it's 3 multiplied by minus 7 uh, plus 2. So 3 multiplied by minus 7 is minus 21 plus 2 is minus 19. So minus 19 is final answer there. Third one then, this is where to get to get trickier then so g of f of x so i'm going to write down what f of x is first so f of x is 2x minus 1 so i'm going to, i need in order to get what g of f of x is then i have to put the 2x minus 1 into um the g function so i'm putting it in instead of the x in the g function uh, so that would be 3 multiplied by 2x minus 1. So watch the way the 2x minus 1 goes directly in instead of that x. And then the plus 2 is on the end. So 3 multiplied by 2x is 6x. 3 multiplied by 
uh, uh, minus one is minus three and then plus two. So we get six X minus one. So that's the final answer there. That's what G of F of X is. The last one then asks us for f of g of x. So again, I'm going to write down what g of x is first. So g of x is 3x plus 2. So then f of g of x would be, so now I'm going to put in the 3x plus 2 into the f function. So therefore I would get 2 multiplied by 3x plus 2 minus 1. So 2 multiplied by 3x is 6x. 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. And then we have to take away 1. So we get 6x plus 3. So that's the final answer.